ートビデオ It's about that time we check in with the lovely angels again. And perfect timing on my part because Dirty Pair's star right now is a lot brighter than it was when I did my video on the TV anime all the way back in 2018. It's prominently featured on the streaming service Retro Crush. The Game Grumps are paying homage slash ripping off the anime depending on who you ask with their Game Gyaro line of merchandise. But... Most importantly, Dirty Pair recently had an extremely successful Kickstarter to not only bring the anime series to Blu-ray, but to also give it a high-quality English dub. The Kickstarter met all of its stretch goals, and it's all but assured that a whole new generation of anime fans will inevitably find themselves binging on the escapades of Kei and Yuri. The time is right for me to go back to Dirty Pair and look at what else that glamorously 80s franchise has to offer for us. And today, Kyoto Video is taking a look at one of the stranger chapters in Dirty Pair's classical period. <laughs> Lovely Angels have been given an assignment to the planet Utbar. Their assignment is to act as bodyguards for a young girl named Misnie with little other information given. But by the time they rye on Utbar's only city, situated on a precarious plateau surrounded by thick storm clouds, they find that Misnie's caretaker Connie has been murdered and that Misnie has gone missing. Not only that, but the local security force and their chief Samara is flat out stonewalling their investigation. Despite this setback, Kei and Yuri end up deducing that the only place Misnie could have gone is the only habitable ecosystem below Utbar's clouds, the vast lush forest known as Nolandia. What awaits our dirty pair is a psychedelic trip down the rabbit hole full of illusions, mad science, and corporate conspiracies. In other words, just another Thursday. 1985's Dirty Pair Affair of Nolandia earned the hell out of its reputation as the franchise's biggest curiosity. From a storytelling standpoint, it just seems like your average Dirty Pair episode. Kay and Yuri get an assignment, go into an exotic locale, find out the assignment is part of some bigger conspiracy, and collateral damage ensues. <laughs> But at its heart, Affair of Nolandia is just different. Different look, different tone, different plot elements. If you came in from either the TV anime or Project Eden, you might be thrown in for a loop. And the problem with Affair of Nolandia is that it is so different from any other Dirty Pair title that came out from around this time period that a lot of misinformation has sprung up around it. So the point of this video is to not just take a deep look at Affair of Nolandia, but to also really untangle a lot of the misunderstandings that surround its existence. Let's start off by addressing the most pressing question I'm sure every one of you has been asking when looking at these clips. Why do Kei and Yuri look like that? Well, first off, you will be pleased to know that the answer I'll be giving does tie into me clearing up all the misinformation that surrounds Affair of Nolandia. Because the Angel's designs are a lot more closer to Yasuhiko Yoshikazu's originals that he had made for the novels, many people assume that Affair of Nolandia is actually an unaired pilot film that was proof of concept before work on the official anime had even started. But the truth of the matter is a little bit more complicated than that. When the anime began pre-production around the spring of 1984, there was some internal debate on how to approach the series and that ultimately started with the character designs. The designs for the angels first passed through the hand of Fujihiko Hosano, a manga artist who had done the comic adaptation of Dirty Bear author Haruka Takachiho's other big work, Crusher Joe. His designs were a lot wispier and more stylized than seen in both the novel and the finalized anime designs. Yas himself also did some preliminary design work in the early planning stages of the anime, basically taking his illustrations and streamlining them for animation. Ultimately, the designs that would end up being finalized in July of that year were the ones made by Tsukasa Dokite. Dokite was a former Urusei Yatsura animator who had gone to work at Sunrise last year, and he took some of the knowledge he had gained from Piero with him. 
he's the one who can really be credited to giving Kei and Yuri their more be shoujo looks that really lumify them up and help them make them super popular among the otaku crowd. In fact, a lot of the anime's overall style can be attributed to lessons Dokite and other former Piero staffers took from working on Urusei Yatsura. Rumiko Takahashi herself was a fan of the original Dirty Pair and based a couple of bit characters off of Kei and Yuri in her manga. Some people have even said that principal characters Benton and Oyuki take a lot of design cues and character dynamics from the angels as well. It's hard not to see why Dokite drew from Urusei Yatsura in his design work. The blueprints were already there. But I digress. The Lum style designs were chosen by Sunrise because it was figured that those designs would reach the widest possible audience. And given that a lot of the elements from the original novels were thrown out in the transition from page to screen, why not continue on that route for accessibility? And yet, some of the staff at Sunrise were having some concerns that, in the pursuit of courting the widest possible demographic for the anime, they might be leaving the fans of the original novels out in the cold. After all, they were an audience the studio also wanted watching the show and buying the merchandise. So while the show went to air in July of 1985, another project was quietly greenlit for a direct-to-video movie that was to be released while the anime was still airing. That project was Affair of Nolandia. The idea behind Affair of Nolandia was to create a Dirty Pair anime that was more in line with the books, it being more of a hard sci-fi story with a little more serious tone, and the designs of the angels being more in line with Yaz's originals. These designs you see here were also being done by Tsukasa Dokite, funnily enough. Planning and production for Affair of Nolandia took around four and a half months. I don't know if such a short production time on a 55 minute OVA film was typical in those days, but even then it still feels like a big rush. After all, even in the golden age, animators were still overworked and underpaid. But even if Affair of Nolandia was a rush job, you really couldn't tell because it looks just as good as an A tier episode of the TV show. Oh, there are a few cheats and holds like you would expect, but there's plenty of high quality animation to go around. Especially in the last 15 minutes of the anime, which is nothing but an extended action sequence where Yuri is chasing down the main antagonist while Kay fights the Terminator. A different Terminator than the last one she fought, mind you. <laughs> And the explosions throughout this anime are top shelf explosions. Those are the animated bits where they actually surpass the TV show on their own. <laughs> but what about the new character designs? How do they still work in the Dirty Bear universe? Well, they are still recognizably Kei and Yuri. In fact, one of the positives of having this more realistic style to their designs is that it shows off their builds better than in the TV show. The designs of the TV anime do show that Kei and Yuri are recognizably athletic, but the affair of Nolandia's designs are quite upfront in saying that the lovely angels are angels with muscles. These aren't girls, these are women who can kick ass and carry heavy artillery. Especially Kay, who looks like she can take down an enemy base with those guns. I think my only real issue I have with them is that there's a part of me that feels like there are some limitations that come with making the designs less cartoonish. With Dokite's original designs, the angels have this huge capability to a wide variety of big emotions. A good portion of the humor of the original series is Kei and Yuri reacting to situations where they just have the stupidest looks on their faces. The reactions aren't over the top, but they convey so much that you can't help but laugh. The Nolandia designs do get some face faults, but they are very blink and you miss it. The realism applied to them really limits what they can and can't do in terms of character acting, so it makes a lot more of their emotional reactions, even the big ones, feel a lot more subtle than they need to be. This ties into another major change that was applied to Affair of Nolandia, the tone. Affair of Nolandia is meant to reflect the hard sci-fi nature of the original novels. Therefore, the whole tone of the anime takes itself a teensy bit more seriously than the average Dirty Pair media released around this time. Not to say that it's a complete dour fest, there is actually quite a bit of lighthearted moments. <laughs> 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 
However, both the mood and the content of Nolandia's story doesn't exactly lend itself to a lighthearted adventure. I've heard some people even call it the darkest Dirty Pair anime, a statement I can't help but agree with, especially considering one of the story beats that kicks off the plot is a scene of a scared innocent woman being murdered inside her own home. <laughs> There's also an extended sequence of the lovely angels getting lost in Nolandia's undergrowth, which turns into a forest of illusions. This leads to an extended sequence where Kay begins to lose track of whether or not she's in a dream or reality, and it's genuinely unsettling. <laughs> Also, because this is a direct-to-video anime in 1985, Tentacles. Take, Take on the world. This sequence also ties into another story element that gives Affair of Nolandia a unique signifier among the rest of the Dirty Bear franchise. The illusions that are being created are actually the work of Misnie because, it turns out, she is a psychic warrior created in a lab. And the reason why these psychic powers have such a huge effect on Kei and Yuri is because they, too, are psychics. In the books, the reason why Kei and Yuri make such a good team with each other is because both of them have the power of clairvoyance and can sense each other's presence and status, as well as makes them incredibly lucky in the face of destruction. This character attribute slash plot element is often omitted from most Dirty Pair adaptations, possibly because it's really difficult to convey in a visual medium. It also might be because it's rarely, if at all, necessary to consistently utilize in a story. So because Affair of Nolania heavily features psychic powers, it's the most opportune time to really show off Kay and Yuri's own psychic abilities. Here being that they know Miss Nye is scared, so they decide to play around in the woods to show that they are harmless. <laughs> This brings me to one of my criticisms of the story of Affair of Nolandia. So remember how I talked about how the main turnaround time for Affair of Nolandia was four and a half months? While that statistic might not be reflected too much in the animation, it's definitely reflected in the story. I wouldn't call it bad, I would definitely take it over Project Eden. Like at least here, Kay and Yuri are very perceptive and figure out the mystery really quickly compared to Project Eden where they are in full flighty broad mode. No, the real problem with Affair of Nolandia is its structure. The whole anime feels like an episode of the TV series stretched out to fill out a 55 minute runtime, and that comes with all the strengths and weaknesses that entails. On one hand, the story is allowed to take its time and build a more complicated plot than what could be allowed in the average 23 minute episode. On the other hand, the anime feels super padded. A lot of scenes feel really stretched out just so it can meet that 55 minute deadline. As unsettling as the scene is, Kay's recursive dream sequence where she goes through five dreams within a dream do end up wearing out their welcome by the end of it. And that scene where Kay and Yuri frolic in the woods to put Miss Nye's heart at ease is a sequence that could have been shortened. <laughs> Maybe even should have been shortened. But the crazy thing about all this, even with the obvious padding, Affair of Nolandia still feels way too short. The anime spends so much time getting sidetracked by extended sequences that characterization and plot development don't even so much take a back seat as they are completely driving two separate cars. After Kay and Yuri find Miss Nye, she is immediately kidnapped by the evil corporation who made her in the lab thanks to the efforts of Samara's security team. And shortly after that, Kay and Yuri immediately go confront the main bad guy, whose name I've completely forgotten, and pretty much read him the riot act about how much they're gonna take him down. All through information, they got through some heavy investigation, conveniently off screen. <laughs> その
Also, Samara makes a very convenient face turn here. This law and justice obsessed security officer completely turns against her boss, all just because he shoves her during his great escape. Hands. Are we the baddies? <laughs> All problems with the Fair of Nolania's story end up coming to a head right at the ending. After an extended action sequence with Kay and Yuri killing the two bad guys, Miss Nie's trauma from all the experimentation she endured ends up taking its toll and she uses her psychic powers to destroy the entire city, killing her and everyone on it except for Kay and Yuri who escape just in time. Not only is this rocks fall, almost everyone dies ending extremely abrupt to the point that the lovely angels barely even dwell upon it in the epilogue, it also makes it seem like the entire endeavor by the lovely angels was completely pointless. Yeah, the mystery behind Misnier's kidnapping was solved, but at the entire cost of the entire metropolis being watched off the face of the universe, along with Misnier and everyone involved in her creation. The entire conflict wasn't even resolved so much as it was erased. I don't want to say this story was pointless, but it's a little hard not to walk away from Affair of Nolandia and go... That was pointless. But the funny thing about this is, I still find myself entertained by Affair of Nolandia. I guess that's the real strength of being an extra long episode of the TV series. It feels like an extra long episode of the TV series. Even if it's mid, this is still the dirty pair I know and love. I didn't come away from Affair of Nolandia frustrated like I did with Project Eden. Instead, it was an anime that just made me go, eh, it was fine. I know Dirty Pair can do a lot better than Affair of Nolandia, but I also know that they can do a lot worse. And as long as it can clear that bar, it is A-OK -okay in my book. <laughs>